Aloha, NASCON TV. This is Pastor John Miller from the Wahiwa Community Church of the Nazarene. So good to be with you again today. Today we're going to talk about the power of prayer, which is really needed because we are inundated with so many negative news, radio, <laughs> newspaper. But we're going to see in this word, there's hope, encouragement, and victory. So stay right there. Don't go away. But as always, this will be a message of hope, encouragement, and victory. good to be here again today. I've been reading this book called Good to Great in God's Eyes, and I think it really has, again, a place to start for today's message. I'm going to read to you on page 13 and 14, sort of an intro to our message about the power of prayer and how it helps us to be positive. He says, this is talking about thinking on great things. Dr. Jake Has Haskins, a professor at the University of Tennessee, spent 12 years researching the effects of media on how people think. One of his studies attempted to determine the impact of a five-minute radio program that was filled with negative stories, children being blown up on a bus, an earthquake that killed thousands, riots in the streets of a large city, and so on. One group listened to negative programs like this daily while the control group listened to more positive and uplifting news. Now remember, this is a 12 year study and they were only listening to this negative thing for five minutes a day. After evaluating the listeners who were daily exposed to five minutes of bad news, Haskins discovered four discernible effects on them. Number one, they were more depressed than before. Number two, they believed the world was a negative place. Does this sound familiar, folks? Three, they were less likely to help others. And four, they began to believe what they heard would soon happen to them. This was simply by receiving and reflecting on the information from a radio program, their perceptions of the world and their outlook on life were adversely affected. Their concept of reality was shaped by their thoughts. See, prayers make our thoughts focused and shaped on the person we're praying to, which we're going to be talking They We're praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of creation, the living God, the true God, the only one God. See, to have a powerful prayer, you must pray to a powerful God. We don't pray to a dead God. We don't pray to rock stones, to statues uh, to the wind, to the air. We're praying to Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi. We're praying to the living God, the God of creation, the God who in six days made the world and he reached down into the dirt for man and breathed into man his very breath, a living soul. The God who, if you want to see the God we're praying to, Go out tonight and look at the stars. They say there's over 150 billion stars in our galaxy. And they say that there's 150 billion galaxies. The God who created those. We're not praying to the stars, the names of the stars. We're praying to the God who created the stars. I'm going to read this to you from the King James Version. Or the New King James Version. And then I'm going to go over some notes with you. And finally, I'm going to close with the testimony that I have of a powerful prayer that I prayed that God answered in three days. Acts chapter 12. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. 
And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. That was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison. He delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him in, intending to bring him before the people after the Passover. This is the main verse for today. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. I love this. 2,000 years ago when the king of the land was killing God's messengers, the church prayed. And I think we should take some instruction from that. Today, in the United States of America, we're not being killed, but we're being muzzled and muffled <laughs> and somewhat harassed. But if the church prays, we'll see we shall prevail. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. We're going to see a little bit later, and I'll talk to you about how when powerful prayers are offered by the church, people's chains will fall off. The change of addiction chains of anger and resentment and bitterness the chains of our enemies through powerful prayers made to a powerful God these chains will fall off amen then the angel said to him gird yourself and tie on your sandals and so he did and he said to him follow put on your garment so he went out and followed him did not know that what was done by the angel was real but thought he was seeing a vision Sometimes the reality of these prayers are so supernatural that we can't tell if it's a dream or if it's for real. This was for real. And I promise you, as you begin to pray these powerful prayers to a powerful God, the things that you thought were only could be dreams and visions in your life will become so real that you'll be astonished like this church was astonished. Verse 10. When they were past the first and the second guards post, they came to an iron gate which leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street immediately, and the angel departed from him. I'm going to talk to you in the notes about how powerful prayers open doors that have been locked to you. You've been trying to go through some doors for a long time. Some of you in your lives for 10, 20, 30 years. And a powerful prayer to a powerful God will just open the door immediately and you'll walk through into your freedom. Verse 11. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the Jewish people. Powerful prayers bring powerful help. This one brought an angel. We see in Hebrews chapter 1 that all the saints which saints are Christians. They're not people who have been made statues of. They're Christians or people who are saved by faith in Jesus Christ have angels who minister to them, all the saints. Verse 12, So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. He went to the place where the church was praying. And as he knocked on the door, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did, she did not open the gate, but she ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. Powerful prayers bring gladness and happiness. 15, check this out. But they said to her, you're beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. They said, it is his angel. <laughs> How many times have we done this? We have prayed to God for something. The answer is right there at the door and we doubt that it's there. We make all kinds of excuses. But we're going to see that it did bring happiness. Verse 16. Now Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Powerful prayers will astonish you. So, just to paraphrase the rest of this till we get down to verse 21. 
He came in, explained to the people what happened. They were happy and astonished. And now let's go to what the people did afterwards. But Herod had searched for him and not found him. He examined the guards and commanded they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. So there was 16 guards watching Peter. Peter was free and his enemies who were the guards and Herod the guards were killed. Now listen. Now let's see what happened to Herod. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him in one accord, and having made Blastus the king's personal aide and their friend, they asked for peace because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat on the throne, and gave an oration to them, and all the people kept shouting, The voice of God and not a man. So they were giving Herod credit as a god. I told you before, there's only one God. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of, the, the word of God grew and multiplied. Now, this is so beautiful. This powerful king could not stand against the powerful prayers Prayed to a powerful God from a powerful church. And those that he sent to destroy Peter were killed themselves, and so was he. So let's just take a few minutes to ponder this and think about the power of a powerful prayer. It says in James chapter 5 that the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. If you're a Christian, you're righteous because you are made right through Jesus Christ. Righteousness of God is imputed and imparted to you through Christ. So you don't have to be perfect. So that's what that saying is. Every Christian has the ability and the authority to pray a powerful prayer if they will just do it. Now let's go through the notes. You're going to love this. It's going to get you so excited. He is our refuge in the storm He is our peace in tribulation He is our hope, the Holy One O tu la donna quito Que le lam chasco O tu la donna Giving thanks for all he's done. Here we stand in revelation. We are redeemed, redeemed by the Son. O tu, la donna quito, vive la chasco. O tu, la donna
Number one, powerful prayers cause forth angelic help. We saw in this passage, as the church was praying, Peter was kept in the prison, but the church made constant prayer, and then an angel of the Lord showed up in prison. Some of you, I've done this myself, we have said that God doesn't know what I'm going through. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody's here to help me. I promise if you start praying these prayers of faith, and I told you before, it says in Hebrews, that all God's servants, all God's children, have ministering angels to them. Angels will show up to help you. And you also have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you have many people in the family of God that can help you. Number two, powerful prayers, they break the chains of bondage. We have a ministry here called Celebrate Recovery, and it's a Christ Center ministry that uses the 12 steps based on biblical principles. And we have seen many people over the last two, three years who have come in in bondage, chained to these addictions. They tried counseling. They tried some form of drugs to get off of other drugs. They tried abstinence. They tried all these things that didn't work until they found out that through receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and working a spiritually based program, the chains of their addictions fell off. So I invite you on Monday nights at 7 p.m. at the Wahiwa Community Church of the Nazarene, 7 o'clock, to come and join us for this Christ-centered ministry that helps your chains fall off. Number three, powerful prayers opens locked doors. I've met so many people over the years who say they can't go to school because they don't have money. They didn't finish high school, so they don't think they can go to college. And the list goes on and on and on. They've been divorced, so they can't be remarried. On and on and on. I mean, they were born poor, so they can't make money. But I want to tell you something. A prayer, a powerful prayer to a powerful God will open doors that can't be opened by natural ways. Doors will supernaturally open for you. Doors for relationships, doors for freedom, doors for opportunities. I was reading in a book last week, I thought this was very interesting. It said, we don't need more mayors, like mayors of cities, but we need more prayers. Doors will open if you pray. Number four, it brings joy. When Peter came to the door, that little church that was in there praying for him was so happy. They were, they were so beside themselves. Remember Rhoda? She didn't open the door. She ran off. She was so happy. Some of you have, have been chasing happy, happiness. for some, You know what the number? I've read this uh, last week, too. The number one reason for unhappiness is trying to search for ways to be happy. <laughs> Live your life and pray prayers to God. And through the answers to the prayers, then happiness is a byproduct. But so many people are trying to find happiness through drugs, alcohol, sex, money, uh, accomplishments. It can only be found through the Word of God and through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that starts with a prayer. Five, we read this too. Powerful prayers astonish believers. Now, when I say powerful prayers, I'm not talking about the kind of prayer where you're driving to Walmart and you're looking for a parking space. Say, Lord, give me a place at the front of the of the store. That's not a powerful prayer. I'm not saying it's a good prayer. I'm talking about a, a prayer that can only happen by supernatural events. That you know for certain, because of the prayer and getting in contact with a powerful God, that something changed something supernatural something above natural happen and you will be astonished six when you get answers to powerful prayers it gives you a testimony a testimony a lot of us say we're struggling that the enemy is attacking us the scripture says we overcome the enemy 
by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for us and the power of our testimony. But too many times we don't have a testimony because we haven't prayed prayers to be freed from the things that are holding us down. Number seven, powerful prayers defeat God's enemies. We saw in this story how the 16 guards and the king who was trying to harass Peter and keep him in prison and kill him, they ended up dying and he ended up living. So if someone or something's coming against you, instead of fussing and fuming and fretting, pray a powerful prayer. Try it. Number eight, powerful prayers multiply the word of God. Start praying for your relatives to be saved, for your enemies to be saved, for these nations and kingdoms that are set themselves against the godly principles to be saved. And see if the Word of God is not, in fact, multiplied instead of suppressed. Here's the application. Number one, what are you praying for? Are you praying for places to park at Walmart? <laughs> I'm not saying you can't pray those prayers. Are you praying for people to be saved and sanctified and set free, for marriages to be saved, for kids on drugs and alcohol to get off and come home to their parents, for mighty things to happen? What are you praying for? Number two, have you been, have you been astonished by the resorts of your prayers? That'll give you an indication of what kind of prayers you're praying. If you're praying a little tiny simple prayers which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that we should be the Bible says don't worry about anything but pray about everything I'm talking about have you been astonished lately by a prayer that you prayed that was so supernatural in its, in its answer that it astonished you three do you have a recent testimony I talked to some Christians and asked what God's doing and they tell me stories of 20 years, 30 years, 10 years, 5 years. So many can't tell me something that happened this week or today or last week. Do you have a recent testimony of an answer to a powerful prayer? These are like questions that a doctor would ask you to see where it hurts or where the ailment's at. Number four, what are the results of your prayers? You should be able to see tangible, explainable, verifiable results from your prayers. That's how you have a testimony. See, the reason people are afraid to come and tell others about their trials and tribulations, temptations, because they're ashamed, they're prideful. So we can't pray for you. And then when the, when the thing that you, has been hindering you gets answered, there's no testimony. So I encourage you today or sometime this week to go to your brothers and sisters in Christ and share your trials, tribulations, temptations, and persecutions with them so they can pray. So when these prayers are answered, we'll have tangible results that we can tell unbelievers who will lead them to Christ and His Word will be multiplied. So, finally, I'd like to give you five powerful prayers that are found in the Bible. If maybe you're struggling praying, one of the best things you can start off with is praying scripture. So I want to give you five prayers and where these where these scriptures are found. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. You can look them up and you can just, until you're at a place where you can pray maybe these prayers for yourself, just read these scriptures and pray. Put your name in place of some of these names. Number one, the prayer of Jabez as found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. Two, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 9-13. That's the prayer Jesus gave to his disciples when they said, teach us how to pray. Number three, Jonah's Prayer for Salvation, Jonah chapter 2, verse 2-9. through nine. Four, David's Prayer for Deliverance. You remember King David? He was a man after God's own heart. This is found in Psalm chapter 3. You can read the whole chapter. And finally, the fifth prayer that's powerful in the Bible is Hannah's prayer for praise. That's found in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. Look up these prayers, pray them, 
and believe. Expect to be astonished. Anticipate chains falling off. Dream about doors opening up that you've never seen open. I promise you, the powerful prayer made to a powerful God will become life-changing for you and those around you. I want to say a prayer with you as we go off the air today. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray to the God of creation that made everything, that hovered over the face of darkness and made this whole world, this whole universe and everything in it in six days and rested on the seventh. And everything he created, every time he created, he said it's good. But when he made you and me, he said it's very good. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for those people who are watching, who are not praying prayers to you, expecting great things. I pray that you help them. Many in scripture have said, Lord, help us in our unbelief. Give them the faith of the size of a mustard seed that they can start praying powerful prayers to a powerful God. Then I pray for someone who may be channel surfing and just came across this channel, doesn't even know you, Lord, as their Lord and Savior. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that they will receive you as their Savior. They'll repent of their sins, their rebellion against you. They'll ask you to come into their heart and be their Lord and their Savior. It says in, in, the, in the book of Romans, in chapter 10, that if you confess with your mouth, that you've believed in your heart, that Christ rose from the grave, you shall be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you can have enough faith to believe that Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave, believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth, you'll be saved. And you'll be able to pray powerful prayers. If you prayed this prayer today, and ask the Lord to come into your heart, that I'm gonna pray here in a minute, send me a message to john at nazkind.com J-O-H-N at N-A-Z-K-I-N-E dot com. And we'll try to follow up you with some Bible studies and maybe a Bible if you need it or get you some extra help. But here's the prayer you can pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner. I've disobeyed you. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth that I have believed in my heart that Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty for my sins and I want to be a Christian I want to be your child Lord come into my heart and my life and help me in Jesus name I pray amen